All right, Steve Quayle, recap what your intel saying they're deploying with motorcyclists. Uh, are they deploying something, or are they receiving a vaccine, or are they... No, no, they're, Alex, they're being given the bioagent to release at a coordinated time across the country. Because, look, everybody knows that in the uh, late summer going into the fall, there's a lot of guys that are biking on the roads. But what's fascinating is the ability of the bikers to draw less attention than, let's say, Humvees or dark uh, Denali's or Yukon's or Suburbans or whatever. So what is interesting to this, though, is I believe there are multiple strains. This is what people have got to understand. There are multiple strains that have been developed to check all along the efficacy of whatever vectors they're using. Now, what could be more innocuous than uh, people obviously pulling into a gas station or guys going down the road on their bikes with some type of uh, uh, an aerial dispersal thing hooked into a Venturi? And what's interesting to me is we have an eyewitness report uh, of a gentleman who actually confronted, I think there were a group of six guys, and one of them was the head guy, all Eastern Europeans, and they basically got very nervous. He also had his forty five tucked into his uh, pants, and when they saw the pants, they all looked at the uh, head, the uh, three, oh, I'm sorry, the bikers that weren't the leader looked to the leader for uh, basically his indication of what to do, and he kind of put his hand down like do nothing. So the point is, is that what I think that people have got to understand is, is that the clustering. Now here's what everybody's got to understand: there are specific, specific intel links that go to Kansas University and some of the other universities of specific scientists here that are uh, uh, that have been communicating on high frequency radio and that they had been, um, how should I say this, under the cover of a National Institute of Health or a National Science Foundation grant program, have been giving tips the fact that, look, they were going to initiate this in the universities and in the schools. Now let me stop you. They are now this week having quarantines over people having the flu at universities all over the country to beta test in a controlled area where they just show up and tell the young students you can't leave. The states are passing laws to conform with the executive order that conforms with World Health Organization Level 6 martial law rules. So the point is the safety is off, the trigger is cocked, the tyranny gun is to our head, and yes, we've confirmed and had guests on universities all over the country months ago, and then reports weeks ago, are having National Guard, regular army doing drills of locking down the universities. So clearly they were drilling to have that be the beta test to show everybody a lockdown so everyone is acclimated, so we see the phasing and the scripting even before April when all of this started with the emergency managers at the city and county level in Indiana and Illinois and New York on this show and with the documents as the feds were saying flu will come this year, millions will die, there will be mass graves, this is not a drill. Now the question is are they planning to go with a real flu or will the pathogen be in the shot or will it be in both to scare people and some of the vaccines not in some of the other different releases. We know top virologists have said that it is an engineered flu, or is this just the fear-mongering of the flu, the cover to get the NORTHCOM assets and other centralized command systems in other nations in place under the cover of the flu hysteria? Well, let me say this. It's going to be an integration of the flu to cover the financial disaster that's in the making. And you can't, you can't separate the fact that the international elite want to rid the planet of the population. You and I have done years and years of validation and verification of all their different statements. Now we have, in the last 48 hours, China uh, firing a shot across the financial bow, basically saying, we won't take any more of America's junk paper, declaring the whole class of financial instruments as derivatives as junk. And, and gold that, is exploding. <laughs> gold is exploding. And what that, why that's critical, Alex, is this. The idea is that America was raped, pillaged, and plundered. And everybody that knows their pirate history will know that after you've raped, pillaged, and plundered, what do you do? You burn the cities, okay? And what's tragic is that I don't believe people in this country recognize how in the hell, and it's hell, literally the abomination that rises from hell, 
can we send all our troops to Afghanistan and Iraq, and meanwhile we're importing foreigners, and we're seeing the prepositioning of men and materials all over the country? You remember all the crap I caught when I said there are, you know, 345,000 people in this country? And all of a sudden, now it's stated. So how do you get that when the U.S. military is saying, we don't have enough men to send over there, but all of a sudden... The magic number, 395,000, show up. Well, this well is I mean, NLE09, guys, put FEMA up on screen for people at PrisonPlanet.tv. Radio listener can just Google NLE09, and the top link that comes up is FEMA.gov forward slash media forward slash facts forward uh, sheets NLE09 dot SHTM, and it says troops from foreign countries. Right there, participating in, in responding to terrorism in the U.S. It's right out in plain view. I've had, Alex, since you and I did the last show together, that when I was on with you last, I've had multiple law enforcement and military contacts absolutely tell me that they're noticing foreign observers assigned to the Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, State Patrol, whatever you call it. But one of the guys said, Steve, he said, look, I'm XSF, Special Forces. And he said, I know a hitter when I see one. He said, I was one. And I said, well, and I'm just making this name up. His name is not Mike. I said, well, Mike, then you know what he's there for. And here's what this man, who's a former Special Forces, a major law enforcement and a hero to the law enforcement community, said, he said, I know he's here to take out us after we've been ordered to do the unconstitutional and the immoral. And he said, me and my men are not going to do it. So, Alex, what I'm saying to you is this. The pre-positioning of foreign observer slash assassins has already been integrated into many, not all, but many of the law enforcement agencies across the United States. That is, you and I have spoken about Marcus Wolf. We have spoken about Evgeny Primakov. We have spoken about the Department of Homeland Security hiring them. And these are standard communist operating procedures, and now we've got Obama going to address all of the kids on the 8th of October, the same kids that are going to be held captive, and the parents will be held captive if their kids are at school. I, and I would it, imagine he's going to comfort them during the flu. This is going to be the whole kickoff. He's not saying that. In fact, I'm glad you brought that up. I want to do that now. Van Jones, who works for the White House, he's a czar uh, over communications and community organizing, the tens of billions they're handing out to these groups, uh, we're getting videos, reports, local news, them in the red and black uniforms, knocking on doors, threatening people, on video, beating people up at town halls, biting fingers off, Associated Press. I mean, folks, you cannot make this up. We have Al Gore on, on audio saying, don't, you know, report on your parents. They're liars about global warming. You know best. Uh, we've got Obama to address the students, asking for their help in his agenda. I mean, it, folks, you cannot... Again, I can't believe this is happening in America. I mean, even though I knew it was coming, it's now here. It's kind of like the bully says he's meeting you after school. The school day's over. You walk out. There he is. He weighs 50 pounds more than you, and you, the fight's on. I mean, the bully is now about to punch us in the nose. His arm is moving, and... And then the media matter says I'm a criminal and none of this exists. Here is Van Jones, the community organizing uh, bully, uh, saying on syndicated radio what's happening. Here it is. Uh, one of the things that has happened, I think, too often to progressives is that uh, we don't understand the relationship between minimum goals and maximum goals. Uh, you know, right after Rosa Parks uh, refused to give up her seat, if the civil rights leaders had jumped out and said, okay, now we want... Uh, reparations for slavery, we want uh, redistribution of all wealth, and we want to legalize mixed marriages. If that had been there, they had come out with a maximum program the very next day, uh, they'd have been laughed at. Um, instead, they came out with a very minimum program. Uh, you know, we just want to integrate these buses. Uh, the students a few years later came out with a very minimum program. We just want to sit at the lunch counter. But inside that minimum demand was a very radical kernel that eventually meant that from 1954 to 1968, you know, complete revolution was on the table uh, for this country. And I think that this green movement has to pursue those same steps and stages. Right now we're saying we want uh, to move from suicidal gray capitalism to some kind of uh, eco-capitalism where, uh, you know, at least we're not, you know, fast-tracking the destruction of the whole planet. Um, will that be enough? No, it won't be enough. Uh, we want to go beyond 
systems of exploitation and oppression altogether. But that's a process. And I think what's great about uh, the movement that's beginning to emerge is that the crisis is so severe in terms of joblessness, violence, and now ecological threats that people are willing to be both very pragmatic and very visionary. And uh, so the green economy will start off as a small subset, and uh, we will, we're going to push it and push it and push it um, until it becomes the engine for transforming the whole society. My guest has been Van Jones, founder and president of Green for All. I don't All. know if you guys know Van Jones. Van Jones is... Ooh. This is his house, apparently. Van Jones, all right. So, Van Jones, we were so delighted to be able to recruit him into the White House. We've been watching him... Uh, really, for he's not that old, but for as long as he's been active out in Oakland and all of the ways that he has, the creative ideas that he has. And so oh, yeah, now that's we enough. Have captured